Workflows have to deliver good quality, but they also have to deliver speed and efficiency. We had a little problem with drafts of the first chapter of this book, which showed how one single image was corrected start to finish. It was a long chapter, and the beta readers said afterwards, no, this is a terrible chapter because everyone is going to assume that it took two hours to correct this picture because there are so many steps. So I have to have some way of uh, countering that supposition because I've said it takes about three minutes. So what I'd like to do in this video is work very fast, just show you how I would correct this image. I'm not, I haven't looked back on how I corrected it when I wrote the chapter, so I don't know. I'm going to be using some different procedures, no doubt, this time. Um, we can take a look afterwards and see how well I did. But I'm going to work on this picture the way that I normally would, with maybe a couple of exceptions. I'll make a couple of grunts now and then, sort of indicating what I'm doing. I'm not going to explain them because I want to go for speed. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll sort of say what's, what's happening. And second, um, this can be thought to be sort of under real work conditions because uh, we're here in Italy and we just had lunch and in Italy you always have wine with lunch and we had a couple of very nice bottles of Chianti which is nice because after the, after that wine it's amazing how how much you're willing to say well it's good enough okay well we'll find out whether it's good enough so again what I'm trying to do is work on this picture as I normally would to show you an idea of what this what speed is involved so I'll, I'll, I'll time myself too. First I guess I, I should uh, talk about certain assumptions about this picture. This is, this is about Emerald Lake. In, um, it's in British Columbia. It's called Emerald Lake because the, the lake color itself is very unusual. It's a glacial lake. It's sort of a, a, a luminescent cyan. Uh, I don't mind under the circumstances, which is probably a tourism photo, I wouldn't mind if it was a little bit more brilliant than it really is in real life. Also, there are some pine trees in the background, and those, I think, could also be um, a little bit brighter than they really are, because the idea is to make people want to go to this place, not necessarily be completely accurate to the scene. So those things are in my mind before I begin, that I'm not necessarily going to be accurate. I'm looking for something attractive, um, and I want to have it full of detail, you know, full of richness, that kind of thing. So bright, vivid, happy colors, just the sort of thing you might want in a picture postcard workflow. So that's how I'm going to proceed. Picture is up on the screen, and I am ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to look first for some color issues. Uh, clouds seem to be a little bit blue. Trees look like they might be the right color, maybe lack a little bit of yellow. Okay, I analyze this. I've got my PPW screen up. And I'm thinking, i got to do this. I need more uh, darker green channel in the shadows, but a lighter green shadow in the highlights, or lighter green highlights, maybe not quite that light, like so. Oops, need a darker blue in the highlights, I think. How about the cloud color now? Slightly green. Okay, I think I'm going to live with that. There's before, there's after. Change to color mode. Done. Flatten. New layer for luminosity. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Channels. Red, green, blue. Okay, red seems to be best. Okay, uh, all three channels are now open. Image apply image. Green. Normal, or excuse me, red is going to be the source. Normal mode. 50%, I'm just guessing at that. Okay, now I'm going to look at the resulting channels. You see how it's made the document a little bit grayer. Resulting channel, the red. Add contrast to it. The resulting green. Again, add contrast to it. In the blue, I'll go whole hog. I'll like wipe out the sky, do something like that. That really adds contrast. Now look at the whole thing, bad color, change the luminosity mode to recover the original color, there's before, there's after. That's a step in the right direction. Okay, um, wondering whether I want to uh, play the bigger hammer action here to get more detail in the trees. Maybe, maybe not. Let's play the action, I just click on it, um, and the action is now being played. Let's see what it did. 
there's before, there's after, that's probably a step in the right direction too. Strikes me as a little bit too much, so I'm just going to go like that. Bang. Discard the hidden layers. And now I think I'd like to apply the shadows highlights command. That's right here too. Okay, that makes it look better. Now I conclude this picture needs uh, to come a little bit closer. Um, the light half is too light in, in respect to the dark half. I apply a false profile action. Um, we get that. Layer mask from the bottom. Um, blur it a little bit. Tend to need that. I'm, gonna, I'm a little bit concerned about haloing here, so I'm going to be somewhat careful with my blurring. Gaussian blur. Fade to lighten. And like that. So now I'm going to consider the HK action of chapter 13, and I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it would help. Okay, so I'm now going to be going into LAB to make some color enhancements. I select a reasonable area of that representing what I'm interested in in this picture, and up comes this. First uh, step, do I like what this computer is doing in terms of detail? And I say, yes, I do like what I just saw. Okay, now we're too colorful. Actually, first I'm gonna first I'm gonna make sure I have good highlights and shadows. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay, now it has approximately the right range. Now I can make it no, well maybe I want to maybe I also want to make it a little bit darker. Like that. Okay, now decision about color. Do I like what this is doing? A little bit. Do I like what this layer does? Yeah, sort of. Nice color. Flatten, I'm done. Time to sharpen the picture. Got a sharpening action that works. Okay, and how do we like that? There's before, there's after. That's pretty good. I'm just going to recheck to make sure that we have a good um, shadow value and a good highlight value. That seems good. That seems good also. So I am now done. Let's see uh, how we did. Let's open the original. We went from that to that. Last time I did this, I, I mean, I saved a copy of it. I don't know exactly how this was done. So that's the last one that I did for the book. This one actually maybe is a little bit, might be a little bit better. Let's see. Um, so that's, that's the one I did for the book. And here's the one I did this time. Maybe split the difference between the two of them. Um, I kind of like the yellower trees here. Um, the sky, I think, is a better blue color. Maybe the trees are a little bit lighter here than I would like. I kind of think they, they look nice and rich here. The lake, probably better in this last version. But they're both pretty good. Okay, So, if you read the chapter and watch all these steps take place, or the equivalent steps, because I, I state again that I don't remember exactly what I did in the book to get this result. It was something like this, but there may have been some slight variations here and there. Don't get discombobulated into thinking it takes a long time. The whole idea of having a panel like this to work with and a disciplined workflow is so that you can work fast and get high quality results with it.